Hi, this is Ron, the colorblind artist, and I've been drawing ever since I could pick up a pencil. A few years back, I decided to give painting a try. And not just any painting, I want to paint a masterpiece. So I decided to make these videos to document my journey from a beginning painter all the way to that masterpiece. Now just how far I'll go, we'll just have to wait and see. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Alright, in this video I'm going to be painting a landscape, or basically just a red barn. Uh, the image, the reference image I used for this is from an AI generated image, and I do want to talk about AI a little bit, but before we get to that, let's go over the colors I'll be using for this painting. All right, as I said before, I like to use uh, a nice simple palette. I typically have uh, the three primary colors, a neutral brown and a Mars black and a titanium white. And my three primary colors I will be using for this is an alizarin crimson, a French ultramarine, and a cadmium yellow. And my neutral brown is a burnt umber and of course Mars Black and Titanium White. And the first thing I did with this painting, I just sketched it out uh, with a little bit of Burnt Umber and Titanium White and then I moved on to the sky using some of that French Ultramarine with a little bit of the Titanium White to lighten up the values and I added a touch of Burnt Umber to kind of desaturate that blue a little bit so it wasn't so vibrant. Now, as for AI, uh, I'm really not for or against AI, and although I've thought about it quite a bit, I I'm still not quite sure where I stand on it. I'm not too worried about them creating some T-700 Terminators and it coming back and destroying all the humans. I'm not worried about that. I think there are some good applications that AI could really help out humanity, but then there's things that I'm concerned about that maybe it could also hurt humanity. And my biggest concern is what it's going to do to future generations and to the children, the kids, as far as using AI to create images like this. And it just kind of squashes their creativity and, and their thinking and their little minds. Just like they got to go out when they're young and they, and they go out and play and they're, they're using their muscles and growing their muscles and learning hand-eye coordination and all their mechanical skills as far as how their bodies works and operates and knees bend and all that. They also got to exercise their minds. So I'm, I'm worried that the future generations, instead of kids getting out and building things with sticks and mud and rocks and, and being really creative and thinking of different ways to solve problems, and using finger paints, they're not going to want to sit there and take the time to learn how to paint or to figure out colors or anything about the color wheel when they can just sit down, a couple keystrokes, and out pops a painting. Now, of course I know you have to, as of today, you have to be able to read, write, be able to type in sentences and, and tell the AI what you want. But who's to say that in a few years they won't just have some pictures that some three or four year old can just point at a horse and point at a mountain and point at a barn and out pops the image of a horse next to a barn next to the mountain. So what's the solution? I don't know. I don't think it should be government intervention when, or censorship or anything like that. I think what it comes down to, it's just going to have to be good parenting. You just got to trust the parents to not give these kids AI until they get older in life. Let them learn their mechanical skills. Let them learn their critical thinking skills. And then maybe, who knows, college age, they can say, oh, by the way, here's a new tool. We call it AI. It's artificial intelligence. And it's a great tool if you want to be a painter. So like I said, I, I don't don't have the solutions. I don't know, but I think it's just something we need to be aware of and just something we need to proceed slowly with and, and just, just keep an eye on it and pay attention to what it's doing to our kids 
in the future. Of course, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite because here I am painting a painting from an AI generated image. But that's where I think AI can actually be a good tool to use. And this is a perfect example of it. I've, I've went around my area here locally and I've taken some pictures, tried to get some reference images so I can do some landscape paintings. But I'm not a very good photographer. I don't have a very expensive camera. I just use my cell phone. And I don't really know how to get that good shot I would like to make a painting of. And as far as plain air, I just really don't have the option to go out there. I don't have the tools that I've not set up to go out and set up somewhere and do plain air painting outside, sitting on the side of a road somewhere. That, that just doesn't work for me either. So I can get on here. I could kind of type in the image I'm looking for. I can get them to give me like an ideal. And I don't know. I'll just take that image and just put a little human touch into it, make a painting out of it. Okay, I've babbled on long enough about artificial intelligence. While I'm working on a barn here, I want to go over the colors I used to make this grass, the green grass. It's pretty basic, pretty simple. And when you got a small palette, uh, there's certain things you need to know. I made a top 10 list earlier. One of those things on my list is to learn the basic color wheel. And if you know the basic color wheel, you know you can make green with French ultramarine, or well, blue and yellow. Here I have uh, the French ultramarine and the cadmium yellow. And with those two mixed together, you can make the green. So I, I mix those two together to get my basic green. And then you can change the values by making it darker by adding more of the French ultramarine. You can make it lighter by adding more of the cadmium yellow and titanium white. I wouldn't suggest using any Mars black to make the grass uh, darker. That just that doesn't work. It just looks a lot better with the ultramarine blue or the blue you're using to make the green to make the darker areas. As far as the lighter areas of the green, uh, you just take your green mixture that you made with your blue and your yellow. You add titanium white to kind of get it to the value you want it. But when you add the white to the green, it has a tendency to kind of kind of desaturate it, almost kind of graze it out. So to get that, that more of that vivid green color in there, you just add some more uh, cadmium yellow or whatever yellow you're using to kind of crank up that saturation a little bit. And as for these clouds I'm painting, the darker areas, I just use some of the uh, French ultramarine and burnt umber with titanium white that makes kind of a, a medium gray color. I use that for the shadow areas of the clouds. Now there was more I could have done with the clouds. Uh, I really didn't spend a whole lot of time on them. I just wanted nice simple clouds. I just made sure that I didn't put any pure white in the clouds. I didn't want them to be like overpowering. Uh, it's really not the main focal point. And as far as the red for the barn, well, I couldn't just take out the lizard and crimson and just paint the barn like that. It would have been way too saturated, way too vivid, bright red. So I basically just added some gray, Mars black, titanium white, uh, made like a medium gray vic mixture, and added that to the lizard and crimson, and that gave me this really nice barn color. And after getting the color down that I wanted for the barn, I just came back in with some little streaks of... Uh, I think it's almost pure Mars black and I made a mixture of uh, burnt umber and some uh, cadmium yellow with some titanium white and just get a little indications of like individual boards and kind of old and weathered boards and then I just came through here put little windows and uh, little door frames and window frames and continued to make little indications of individual boards and if I haven't bored you to death uh, so far, uh, and you're still here watching me in this video, I'm sure you won't mind reaching down there and hitting that thumbs up button for me. It really helps a lot. I would appreciate it. And here I'm just doing some finishing touches on the barn, on this little outcropping uh, part of the barn here. And after I got the barn finished up, I came back in here and put some highlights on the grassy area that was in the sunlight. And I used the same grass mixture I used before. I just add a little bit more titanium white and a little bit more of that cadmium yellow. 
And I really wasn't worried about detail. I was just kind of having the, the brush just kind of bounce around the area here. And after I got the areas in the full sunlight, I just I came back in with another mixture, a little bit lighter for the darker areas. And I came back in here and did the same for the darker areas. And if this would have been one of my first landscape paintings, I would have spent hours on this grass. But I only spent about five to ten minutes redoing this like this. And it was actually kind of fun doing it. Not worrying about a whole lot of detail. And I finished this painting up by uh, getting these the tree limbs on the right side of the painting. Uh, I'm really not worried about... I'm not trying to draw each little leaf. I'm just putting these dots down there to kind of map out where I want the branches. And then I'll come back in here later and kind of... Like I said, I'm not doing each individual leaf. Uh, it, it's better to make it just like look uh, kind of abstract. But you got to kind of map it out before you do that. And that's one reason why I kind of like the paint standing up. I'll do a little area. I'll step back seven, eight feet, take a look at it, see if it looks realistic or, or what I need to change on it. And after working with these limbs for a little bit and getting them how I want it to look, I adjusted a little bit of the values in the clouds. And as I'm finishing up this painting here, I uh, just want to show everyone that AI can be used for good and can be real helpful in paintings. I want to thank everyone for watching. Take care and God bless. Mm -hmm.